Greetings and welcome to Monster Legends and another special feeding episode. This time I'm going to be feeding a fella that I mostly picked up in a survival dungeon. The remaining cells came from some very generous teammates. And this is... Nerok. And Nerok is a legendary. He is Earth. He's in the Underworld. He's from the Underworld, I guess. He's part of the Evil Legions and apparently he's also a superhero. Okay, we have a lot of superheroes these days, and a lot of times it doesn't apply. Let's see if Nurok is a superhero, right? Well, he certainly uh, did better than I have been getting with rune slots because he's only got one locked. Let's see if I'm going to be unlocking that final one. So we're going to put him over here because that's the normal drop-off point these days. Okay, that's kind of an interesting attack. It's kind of magical. I was expecting him... I, I believe he's an attacker. I was expecting some kind of a physical stuff, but I mean, is he a caster? That could be very interesting. Let's find out. All right, where is he there? All right, a little cute face there. He doesn't look evil. Well, actually, he kind of does look a little evil. Yeah, and name. Uh, no, we're not going to do that. And we'll find a cool name for him, right? Being a hyena. I don't know. Are there any famous hyenas around? We'll think of something, right? I'm sure my viewers will help me with that. All right. So this is Nurok. He is a legendary. He is Earth. All right. He has anticipation, which means that extra turners are going to get really hit hard right after they attack, right? No more of that extra turning stuff for them. He is also immune to stun, which is actually kind of useful. It's a very common method of denial, and it isn't going to work on him. So let's look at some stats. His strength is actually pretty good, pretty good indeed. His life, he's surprisingly chunky for a hyena, just saying. We do seem to be seeing a pattern with that. Lots of life on these individuals these days, right? His speed is also pretty good too, so he's got some good stats here. Indeed he does. Let's check out his initial skills. We have Enslaved. Deals low physical damage to one enemy, and then we have But Unchained. Deals moderate earth damage to one enemy. And that very interesting and kind of magical special skill, Scavenger's Hunt. Removes positive status effects from all enemies, deals massive earth damage to all enemies, applies mega stun to all enemies. That's interesting. Is he denialish? I really have no idea what kind of skills he has, but I am looking forward to seeing them. Nurok was a slave of Lord Mammoth and his tribe for many years. Tired of hunting only to bring food to the table of his lord's banquets, he rose against Lord Mammoth and won. Now he lives alone and free in the wasteland desert, where he can hunt for himself and no one but himself. So he fought for his freedom, and now he's free. Why is he evil legions, then? I can buy the superhero thing. It sounds like a great superhero origin story, by the way. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Evil legions? I don't know. He seems to have been wrong there. And um, maybe he was just twisted or something. Perhaps some time on his own. All right, so let's feed him up there, because I want to get to some skills. But, of course, first we're going to his final evolution, and there he is. Okay, he does look a little evil now. But, you know, he was very mistreated. He was treated as a slave and, you know, that kind of thing. All right, well, let's get to the skills because that's why we're all here, right? All right, let's start with... Level 7, Cold Knights. Deals moderate special damage to one enemy, applies nightmares to one enemy. Okay, there's no 50% there, so that's a good place to start. Nightmares aren't my favorite thing. And it is a two-round cooldown, which is a little hefty for something like that. So we'll have to see what's happening in the future here. All right, let's continue to level 10. Fast Metabolism. Removes all negative status effects and applies life regeneration to itself. Gives one extra turn. You know, I might end up keeping that one because that's just really useful. I mean, the extra turn also will um, reduce the... the cooldowns on all his, old, his combat skills too. So, you know, that's the kind of thing you keep. Very, very useful right there. All right, so, and life regeneration, too. Pretty darn good. All right, let's go to level 15. Right there. Cunning Strike. 
Removes positive status effects from one enemy, deals moderate earth damage to one enemy. All right, so he's going to take off the positive status effects and hit them hard. That can be very useful, especially if somebody, say, starts with, like, evade or something. Kind of useful. Maybe he'll get something like that that actually does a little extra something, right? All right, so let's go. So far, I'm liking this. Going to level 20. Exhausting Pursuit. Removes 100% of stamina and applies nightmares to one enemy. Oh, that's nice. Okay, I'm taking that one out for that. Yeah, being able to blank someone's stamina, that alone is just really good. Pretty um, controly though. I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep it, though. We'll have to see what he's got. Let's continue to level 25. Haunting the Prey. Deals heavy earth damage to one enemy, removes 25% of stamina. Oh, that's a zero cooldown. Ooh. There's a really good question. I mean, it, it might be a choice between these two. But, I mean, it's a heavy hit and it's a zero cooldown. Especially considering he has anticipation. You have to take that into consideration. You know, if you just have something like this... He's got to be able to use something, right? All right, for the moment, I'm going to put it here. I doubt I'm going to keep it there, but let's just put it there for the moment. Because I want to see everything that interests me, right? All right, so let's go to level 30. Spear of the Savannah. Deals moderate special damage to all enemies, applies curse, and stamina leak to all enemies? Okay, wow. Everybody's doing curse these days, right? All right, well, obviously, I'm going to be putting that up there because I like to keep the ones that I know I'm going to lead with in the front, right? So I'll have to figure out what I'm going to do in terms of haunting the prey and exhausting pursuit. Do I want to keep one or the other one? Uh, it's kind of tricky. Or do I want to get rid of Cunning Strike? Depends on how I want to use him. We still got some more skills, though, so the decision might come out of my hands there, right? All right, so let's continue to level 3rd If you could have got at least two more, at least two more. Evil Laughter. Applies double damage and gives one extra turn to itself. Removes 25% of stamina from itself. All right, ooh, ouch. So that's going to give him double damage for one turn, give him an extra turn, but it's also going to take his stamina away from him. And it's already a 40 stamina cost. Ow, you know what? I don't think I can take that one. I mean, double damage is awesome and stuff, but, I mean, that's going to cost him dearly. Think of it this way. He's got 140, so that's going to be, what, 35% stamina, assuming he doesn't have any extra stamina loaded in. And then he's going to lose 40 for executing the skill in the first place. Okay, that 25%. I'm assuming that means total and not current. It doesn't specifically say current stamina, so I'm assuming it means total stamina. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be very costly. That's 75 just for executing this skill. I mean, if you don't lead with that, I mean, if you lead with it, it's going to be great. I mean, you do that one and you do this one. See, this one doesn't actually do a lot of physical damage, but it does do the curse and the stamina leak, so this is a great thing to lead a fight with. I don't think I can take evil laughter. I don't, so I'm just going to leave that out. All right, let's continue to level 40. And another skill. Evil laughter. It's just going to keep laughing at me, isn't it? All right, let's continue. Come on, give me another one. I want something different. Haunting the prey. Uh, we did that one. That's still... Uh, let me think about that. I might have to take this one out. As much as I like removing the positive status effects, it's got a two-round cooldown, it doesn't apply an effect, and it doesn't do as much damage as this one. And this one is just too useful. I mean, you could just blank somebody out. I mean, the Nightmares is a nice throw-in, but that's... I'm going to put Haunting the Prey in here. Because, I mean, it just looks kind of really useful. Especially considering... He is an anticipation dude and can just do that, right? All right, uh, there should be, there might be one, there should be one more. There should be one more because we haven't seen anything new here. Okay, true Savannah Ruler. Deals very heavy 
earth damage to one enemy applies curse and stamina lead to one enemy. Two round cooldown. All right. Oh, that is really nice. Okay, well, I'm not taking the group version of that out, right? I mean, that does a lot of damage. That one is useful. Oh, this is a tough call right here. I mean, it's a big old hit, right? It gives the curse and stamina to single target. Thing about it is this one here is a you can use this once every 3 turns and curse to get full effectiveness, right? Has to run the course of 3 turns. The thing about it is if somebody resists it, or somebody removes it from themselves, having a way to reapply it, especially with a very heavy hit, just sounds like a really good idea. All right, I'm not losing that one. Absolutely not losing that one. I might have to lose this one. All right, and then this. That one is just real. I mean, it doesn't do any damage, but being able to take away full stamina away from somebody strategically is just really, really useful. And this is going to, first of all, let him clean bad stuff off himself, give him regeneration and an extra turn. And because he's getting an extra turn, he's going to immediately get that health back. You know, he's going to do regeneration, then he's going to go again, which means he's going to get health back immediately. So that is just really useful. And it's going to reduce the cooldowns and everything else. Oh, I can't. It's tough, but you know, I think I have to take True Savannah Ruler here. Because of this, you know, you you got to look at everything else as being a um, a cooldown lower here, you know? I mean, I would love to keep this one. It's just that I probably could manage without it. And this one is just a really good solid hit. Yeah, I got to take it. I, I may change my mind after testing. We'll have to see. Now, I don't, I, I got a lot of duplicates there, but I don't think I have anything else left. So let's just see. And level 55. No, no, no. Uh, that's a good skill, though. That's a good skill. And level 60, Haunting the Prey. All right. I'm pretty sure that I've seen everything, but let's just take a look. Oh, I did not see. Oh, that's ugly. No, I did not see that one. Power of Kaftar deals heavy special damage to one enemy, removes 50% of stamina from one enemy. You know... Hold on. I might put it in for this one. Because now you're talking about 50% of stamina here now, right? Which can be very useful. And it is also a very strong hit. It's also special damage, isn't it? Because this is Earth. and the, Well, this is his other really big hit, right? The thing about it is I'm not going to lead a fight with this, with him, right? He's not the denial. I'm going to do this for his first attack, right? So they're going to have a stamina leak. They're going to have curse on them, right? Whatever my denial is going to do, my denial is going to do. Later in a fight, this is probably more useful because it's going to do damage, and they probably already have a stamina leak on them. So I don't need to blank them out completely. If it's 25%, it's one thing, but now you're talking about 50%, one round cooldown, and a heavy special damage hit. Yeah, I got to take this one. Yep. I got to take that one. All right, that, that takes care of things for me. I don't really need a zero cooldown because I do have the other one. Unless, of course, my cooldowns get um, set, right? And I think that's everything. All right, so we didn't get that one, but that one is actually very good. All right, let's check out his stats. Uh, his, strength is, his strength is good. His strength is really good. Definitely, he's going to do damage. Life, very chunky indeed. And speed, his speed is pretty good. You know, considering he is a damage dealer... His, his speed is pretty darn good indeed. Yeah, he's going to do some damage. And of course, remember, anticipation. That is just really, uh, it shuts down those extra turners. Especially considering this guy does have some very strong single target attacks. And has a good strength to back it up. And speaking of those attacks, let's go take a look. All right, so these are the skills that I chose. And I think I pretty much nailed the big ones here. There was, I guess you could decide whether or not you wanted to have the 100%. But I'm guessing from him, the big hit with the 50% is probably a better idea. Especially with, again, anticipation. 
He uses that an extra turn or takes 50% of their stamina away after they've attacked, and he's going to be shutting them down that way, you know? So, yeah, definitely something worth considering. All right, let's start with this one. Spear of the Savannah. Deals moderate special damage to all enemies, applies curse and stamina leak to all enemies. Okay, everybody's getting cursed these days, right? I mean, curse is so ridiculously overpowered. If you get it, or your enemy gets it, and they don't do anything about it, they're going to die. The curse themselves won't kill them. It'll do an enormous amount of damage. If they take any other damage, they're just dead, right? They're dead. Because the last stage of it is... Re See, it says one turn, but that's only for the first stage. There's three stages. That one, that one, and the final one, right? And the final one, I think, takes like 40% off all by itself. So it's going to do a lot of damage. Throwing in a stamina leak at the beginning of a fight, too, is very, very strategically good. Unless, of course, your guy actually blanks them out. Actually, if your guys do actually blank out their stamina, it's even more devastating because they won't be able to get their stamina back by charging. Not enough to really do any damage, that's for sure. So this is a great way to lead off a fight with this one. All right, and then we have this one. True Savannah Ruler. Deals very heavy earth damage to one enemy, applies curse and stamina leak to one enemy. He's Anticipation. This one would be Deadly to use on an extra turner who's trying to get those extra attacks in, like a Voltec, a Prince Charmless, a Kane, a Xyla, because he's putting curse on them at the same time. So every time they do an extra turn, the curse will advance one, right? So they'll, and Daniel's also going to take their stamina away from them, and let's not even forget the fact that he's doing an enormous amount of damage to them. Yeah, this guy is really toxic to extra turners, isn't he? Because that would hurt a lot. Yeah, because Curse, once again, it is the single target form of the first skill. But the first skill doesn't do a lot of physical damage there, and this one does. Of course, the one thing to keep in mind, that if you do this one, and you come back, you're going to be resetting Curse back to the first stage. So, you might want to consider perhaps using this one. Power of the Cathtar. Deals heavy special damage to one enemy, removes 50% of stamina from one enemy. Okay, and that's a one-round cooldown. There's a very good skill right there. Once again, you're going right for the stamina. You wouldn't lead the fight with this because that's not who he is. As I said, you go with this one to start with, which means that they're probably losing stamina. Maybe they've attacked themselves or something. So this very well might blank them out. And of course, it's only one-round cooldown, so he can use it a lot. If he was handling an extra turner, he could really go back and forth with these attacks. Uh, because they're fairly low cooldown and they do a significant amount of damage considering he's got a really good strength. So, and of course, you're going to put strength on him, aren't you? Yeah, you're going to put strength on him. All right, and then finally we have this one. I got this one early, but it's too useful not to keep. This is Fast Metabolism. Removes all negative status effects and applies life regeneration to itself. Gives one extra turn to itself. All right, so obviously if you're... He's not going to be stunned. If you're frozen, you're possessed or something, maybe, maybe if you do use possession, maybe it'll actually use this one. Nah, that's only if the computer is running the character, right? Uh, but this will remove, like, torture effects, anything that's actually hurting them or something like that, right? If they have, like, a Reaper on, they're going to die. Or if they have cursed themselves on, right? This is going to remove all the negative status effects. Then it's going to give him life regeneration, then an extra turn. That means that he's going to get the first tick, of the regeneration immediately because his turn is going to come up next. That's also going to reduce the uh, the cooldowns on any skills he's used already. And this one's a two round, this one's a two round, this one's a one round. So he's going to be able to do something else immediately, assuming he has the stamina. That's the only thing that you don't really know. But you know what? Let's see. 30, 30, 20, 30. He doesn't really have very high... Um, Stamina cost for his skills, especially considering what they do. So he's not someone we're going to put stamina on. So it shouldn't really be a problem. Maybe he'll have someone in his groups who's going to do that for him. All right, and um, that's it. He's really very good. He really is. And throwing in the anticipation makes him very, very strong. Good stats, good life, good speed. Everything here is good. Um, I'm putting two damages on him. Because of those two middle skills that do the heavy damage and the fact that he's anticipation, I want him to hit like a truck when the time comes, right? The first skill doesn't really need it. 
because you're going for the curse and the stamina lead. That's really what... But, I mean, he's got a good strength. You put strength on him, he's going to do damage. A special, I think it's special damage. Right, and it's not going to get mitigated. So, I mean, it's not exactly going to do no damage, but you're really going for the curse there. The other ones, they're going to hit really hard. In terms of his last rune slot, I put support speed on him. See, the thing about it is he doesn't need to go fast himself. He's anticipation. He's going to go when the opportunity presents itself. So I would put support speed on him so that his entire group is going faster and he can boost his denial. Yeah, I, I wouldn't put that. I wouldn't put on him. You know, there's actually a justification for putting another uh, strength on him if that's what you wanted to do. That way his two middle skills would really hit hard. Because, again, you don't really need him to go fast because he's going to go when the opportunity presents itself. Does that mean he's going to be a specialist against extra turners? Yeah, he would be. But, you know, the fact that he's got the curse up front means you really could just use him anytime you want. But, again, he's going to be deadly against extra turners. So, this is Narok. He is really very good. I'm very happy I got him. And he is going to be in a testing video fairly soon. Uh, we already have Dr. Mary. And I'd like to get somebody else in there, but you know what? We'll find out when that testing video is going to be. He's definitely going to be starring in it. So anyway, thank you very much for your attention. I really appreciate it. And play games because games are fun. See ya.